So this is gonna be my new display wall and there'll be some lighting going on and then I'll put some uh, soundproofing at the top and at the sides especially to cover up those stains over there but first some of the sponges are a bit deformed and so need to be soaked up okay so now while that's happening let me just prop myself up right here and let's talk about a few things okay let's lock that focus What's up fam, the real Rahim here. Welcome and it's great to have you guys here for another episode. Um, let's just hang out for today's episode because I got a lot of stuff to do and I also have a lot of things that I want to update you. Um, first things first is that thank you very much for 2K. All right? uh, the channel has just hit 2,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone that has been following me thus far and for those that are new in the channel, I hope you can join me for future episodes by subscribing down below. Okay, the camera is getting a bit heavy right now. Okay, let me just prop it up this way. Okay, so now Singapore is having quite a increasing COVID situation, which means that um, the numbers are rising. And so I don't exactly feel like I want to be out and about. I haven't been flying actually for some time, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to be creating content. So I'm just going to take the time now to one is that I'm going to lower the frequency of my episodes. I tried twice a week but due to my work schedule, um, it becomes a bit uh, challenging to pump out content uh, for every week. So I'm going to lower it down a bit. Okay, so I'm going to stick to every Friday. So what I'm going here is for more like quality instead of quantity. And I hope uh, you can see that in the future episodes. That kind of gives me more time to breathe, you know, like kind of live life a bit, like do things that I want to do. I, I love gaming, mobile gaming, which is currently I'm stuck on uh, Call of Duty Mobile and also got myself a new phone. Uh, maybe in a future episode, maybe I'll talk about this phone. It's the Lenovo Legion Pro 2 or Dual or whatever they call it. It's the, basically, it's the second gen of it. There's two fans here, all right? So I'm um, not gonna be talking too much about the phone, but um, because of my interest in this mobile gaming, I'm also redesigning my studio room. This angle, you guys already know. There's my drone zone. Um, I'm trying to see whether I can also use this angle which is not just gonna be a workstation there'll be some sound panels here and then I'll do up this area to look a bit better so that this can also be a secondary angle for filming and also uh, my gaming zone, mob mobile gaming zone maybe I'll wanna be doing some mobile streaming probably get a Twitch account and also um, open up a new YouTube account for uh, gaming in itself so now that brings me to these uh, sound panels that I got off Shopee. Uh, Shopee is a Singapore based app. There's a seller that sold these um, pads. So I got like 48 of them. Came in a package just about this size, all right? And so uh, it was really compacted. Some of them came out quite okay. So the thing here is that you don't actually need to wash them. Um, out of the box, they will expand on their own, but um, you see here this set of five and then there is another set of five which I have washed. There is some height difference meaning to say this set is still quite compacted. I'm going to be washing all of them and drying them out after which I'm going to be mounting them with some spray glue which I got from 3M. That is the best way. You could always use Velcro but um, for me I prefer to use a remountable uh, spray glue. Now if I don't like the design then I can always rearrange it. So on these sponges, if you're looking to soundproof your room, 12 by 12, they have many different designs also not just this but also like those over there, right? So and a few other designs. So do look them up. I'll leave them in the... I'll, you can find their details in the description down below. Okay, let me just prop you up right here and let's talk about something for a minute. So I was... Uh, Flying at Singapore Flyer, one fine day, I met a, a group of DJI enthusiasts. So they wanted to uh, see what the DJI FPV was all about. Well, this was one of my actually first few flights with the DJI FPV. I have yet to change any rates. I had basic settings going on. I didn't really even fly the drone much before that. I flew around. Um, they suggested that, hey, push it. Well, uh, let's see what this thing can do. So ego me with this new bling toy wanted to show off. So I was from the water side, I came in uh, onto the track stretch 
passed by myself and then I went up and did a, a power loop of some sort which I had no idea um, how the rates were like and I kind of lost control and crashed into the ground. I'll have to say this, this is the most irresponsible thing that you could ha ever have done. I did not have uh, a familiarity of the drone. Drone hit the ground, I kind of destroyed a battery which totally is dead now. That's $200, 200 Singapore dollars fly away. The drone also did take some damage but uh, up till now, it's still flyable. I still do fly the drone, yes, of course. There's a crack at the right arm or left arm, I can't remember. But anyway, as the story goes, all's well, all right? I recovered the drone, I changed out a bed, I did some uh, flight tests again, and it was all well. What I didn't expect was actually the police came. I thought they were gonna be like in general screening, you know, gonna be asking like all of us, are you guys flying around here? Are you, do you guys have permits and all that? But instead, the police straight out asked who was the one that uh, flew the drone here and crashed. I'm like, oh, told them, yeah, it's me. I flew around there and I crashed the drone. So of course, uh, I wanna know lah. Like, so officer, what happened? I mean, is there an issue here? So apparently, actually, there's, there was a concerned citizen that complained again against us, wanted to see my particulars, wanted to see the details of the drone, which was something that you'd have to go and look inside your goggles that there's this flight controller number, all the different serial numbers that the drone will have. And then they were asking me whether I had permits to fly in the zone. You asked me about permits, do you even know whether I need permits or not? Because I had to tell them that um, one is my drone is under a certain weight, all I need to do is just register it. I'm not using it for commercial use, so I'm just recreational fly flying. That means I don't need a permit to be flying around the area. Unless I'm going higher than 60 meters, um, Singapore law is 200 feet. I set my limits at 60 meters. Point here is that I don't need a permit. So that's what I explained to the officers. But of course, there are officers on patrol reacting to the situation. So. Um, they're not the one to really find out more detail, going in depth or do an investigation into the matter. So they took down my particulars, they took the details of the drone and all that and what happened. And I thought all was well and done uh, because since nobody was injured and life can go on. But actually, they told me um, you'd have to wait here while uh, we get IOs to come along, investigation, investigative officers to come along to get uh, more facts about the situation because I believe they will want to submit this information to CAAS okay which is the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore which is the governing body of the skies due to one crash in the eyes of the public I have, have now not only have to entertain the police officers but I have to wait for uh, investigative officers to come along and so that was a good um, half to one an hour later then the IOs came along and I repeated my whole story I had to show all my details again flight details also by the way guys you do not even need to switch on your drone just looking through your app you can already see all the flight details that the drone has recorded right um, I'm not telling you that you cannot escape from all this recording but at the same time it is supposed to deter you from doing anything wrong because know that all um, the details can be found in DJI flight system so yeah just fly safe and do the right thing when you're flying around so because this is what the officers the IOs needed to see that there was no um, what's the word I'm looking for malicious intent that's the word okay basically ill intent lah, that I did not um, uh, use the drone uh, illegally or um, to spy at people or to yeah, hit anyone. So all the evidence that they needed to see and investigate on, um, that was on top of the one hour of waiting, there's another half an hour of going through this whole process with the IOs. Um, the IO was nice, there was this lady, I'm sorry I forgot your name, but um, she's just doing her job and so were the police officers. So um, by the time everything was done, all my mates had left and I was left there alone. And just when I thought I could fly, it started to rain. So it was a really hard hit. Uh, Malay say, uh, dah jatuh di timpa tangga, which just basically means in translation is about you already fell off the steps, now the steps land on you. Okay, so it's like uh, double whammy. You don't know how many whammy is really problem after problem after problem. I already had 
uh, had to waste time. I already have a cracked drone. I have to waste time with, uh, with going through this whole mini investigative process. And then it rained. I had to travel home in the rain. I ride a motorbike by the way. So yeah, I had to go through all that. I didn't get to fly much. Okay, camera stopped recording for a while there. Uh, hello, Canon, you and your 29.2959 seconds limit. Okay, so uh, where was I? Three days later after the mini investigation, CAAS actually got back to the I.O. And the I.O. got back to me and told me that actually all is well because um, one, I had no breach of the aviation laws. Two, is at the same time also um, during my crash, I did not hit anybody. Now, if I had hit anybody, it would have been a totally different issue. That is what she wanted to mention and what CAAS also wanted to let me know. So, um, all is well right now. I didn't get uh, into any bigger issue. I'm so glad about that. Um, now, if there's any takeaway from this whole story is that one is fly it safe, right? Don't fly near people. Uh, if not for the risk of crashing into them, you may end up with um, Karens that are just not happy about the way that you are flying and they don't know what the drone is about. So they feel that you're a bit, all your aggressive moves, um, are bringing about too much risk to their livelihood all right so um, avoid flying in crowded spaces two is that remember to set your limits on your drone um, for singapore there is a high altitude limit which is only about 200 feet 200 feet is about 61 meters well just rounded off uh, in your settings you can find a 60 meter mark so just set to that if you're ever flying in singapore i was so glad that i set this limit because um, there were times that I went a bit too high, unknowingly of course, because you're flying an FPV drone, it moves very fast. So if as I was rising um, to do a backflip, a power loop, um, I actually breached the 60 meter mark. What happens when you when you go above the limit is that the drone will actually uh, go into autonomous mode. It will automatically go into a normal mode and just hover itself there and lower itself until it's at the 60 meter mark then you have to get back to manual mode and then you can continue flying so what's that got to do with anything is that at least when i was showing the information to the police officers to the io there was that proof that hey uh, i went above but it was on autonomous mode all right i did not purposely go and fly into above height if i had not put it at a 60 meter mark then it would have been very clear that I actually did fly above there and continued flying, right? So uh, many are getting into trouble because of that. So at least for myself, I had that chance to explain to CAAS and the IOs and the police that I went above that mark, but not uh, purposely. It was accidental and the drone took over autonomously. It went below the mark and then I continued flying. So that brings me to the third point and the last point of this. Uh, hopefully the takeaway for this whole episode is that um, if it does happen, right, that um, somebody complains against you, just go with it, right? Um, you will have to go through these steps, police, IO, CAS, all this whole bigger picture, and um, it's gonna take a lot of time. So um, my advice is just stay away from crowded places. Preferred that if you are gonna go to places you're with your um, drone groups, so at least you can learn stuff, you can take care of each other, and then um, also just generally fly it safe right so anyways i'm gonna wrap up this episode right here uh i got yeah the sponges to attend to so i'm gonna get going with that if you've liked this episode do give me a thumbs up now if you have not subscribed yet do join me for further episode for the content on fpv dji fpv and even line of sight content with drones um in a future episode by subscribing down below now if you want to chat with me do leave me a comment i'll get back to you as soon as i can and pilots as always i'll see you in the skies peace I'll get to the sponges now. Oh, and by the way, with all this talk, I hope my road video mic go to has been serving me well. Um, yeah, give me a bit more freedom to do stuff as I vlog along. Maybe I'll talk about them in a future episode. Bye.